Hey everybody, come on in. How's everybody doing on these YouTube streets? Are y'all surviving? <laughs> these YouTube streets lately ain't no joke. I'm up here like every day. I don't know what to expect anymore. From who anymore? Regarding who anymore? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I try to stay out of trouble, honey. I try to stay out of trouble. Don't try to get involved in nobody's issues, nobody's beefs. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Cardi B getting dragged left and right. Her and Offset, I don't know what's going on. It's like a whole bunch of mess going on nowadays. And these YouTube streets, they are here for it. <laughs> They are here for it, so watch what you say and watch what you do on these YouTube streets because somebody might come for your tail. That's all I got to say. But anywho, um, hopefully you guys got a chance uh, by now to watch the uh, live that me and my sister Samantha did last night. Um, it was actually, uh, it's called Sisters from Another Mister Movie Reviews. And the movie we reviewed last night was Widows, um, which was a really awesome me movie. I had uh, told you guys a couple of weeks ago that we had went to see that movie. We we're going to do a review on the movie. Um, stars Viola Davis, Liam Neeson, really great music movie. Michelle Rodriguez. Um, it's a lot of lot of really good stars in that movie. So we did a review on it last night, and basically, like once a month. Me and my real good friend, who I call my sister, Samantha, or Sam, um, we're going to be doing, as we have been doing for the last few months, a movie review once a month. Just any movie at random. Um, last movie she picked, which was the one we did the review on last uh, night, which was Widows. And the movie before that that we did a review on was Halloween, the new Halloween, which I picked. So uh, since she picked Widows, then the next movie next month will be mine. <laughs> so I will let you guys know ahead of time which movie we are going to see so you guys can get out there and see it too. And then when we do the review on it, um, you can join in on the review and give us your feedback and everything. But anyway, tonight's uh, review is over married to medicine the season finale did you guys watch it um what did you think about it let me know what you thought about it um it was really like um last episode you know it left out the last episode ended with aiden you know mariah's husband aiden he had got really really sick her and the girls was on a, a wine trip you know to the wine distilleries or the wine vineyards or you know they had went wine taste testing and everything and while on that trip uh, mariah knew that aiden was sick you know dealing with headaches and everything but she didn't know how serious it was so he had called her and let her know that he was being rushed to the emergency room and then he later called her back and said it was viral meningitis so at that time you know of course, I was concerned, like, oh, my God, I hope he's going to be okay. Viral meningitis is a serious, serious illness. I mean, that, like, really, like, affects your brains and, you know, the chromosomes around your brain, is, you know, it's, it, it can be very bad. It, can, it has horrible side effects and, you know, even death. People can even die from that. So I'm glad that he went to the uh, emergency room right away. He's a doctor. So, you know, they didn't mention many times in these in these episodes how when them doctors get sick, even the ones on the episode, they tend not to go to the hospital. They don't want to take no treatments. They don't want to take the medicine people provide them. And they doctors. So the same thing they be telling us to do, make sure you follow these orders. Make sure you follow instructions. Call if you need anything, you know. Doctors is like the worst patients, but I'm glad he did go. And he, you know, he's back at home. He was in the hospital for about a week. So he's back at home now, back with his family. So that is really, really awesome. And it looks like he was, you know, on the up and up. But um, 
And Toya, yeah, it was Toya. Toya had even reached out to Mariah, you know, to check on Aiden. And I thought that was really cool. That was a good look for Toya because you know that her and Toya has been at each other's throats for a minute. So, you know, for her to reach out and put their differences aside to check on her husband, I thought that was really cool. That was really cool of her. Hey, Darrell. Hey, Instagram. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, on Instagram. Welcome, everybody, on YouTube. We're just doing a review of the season finale of Married to Medicine. And um, Contessa, it looks like her father, you know, is back in her home. She got her father back again. Now, it's also very nice to see them back together, spending time together, because, you know, um, he was diagnosed with cancer. And he's like some of those people who find out they have cancer or find out they have, you know, a serious illness and they don't tell anybody. They don't tell their children. They don't tell their spouse. They don't tell their friends. You know, he's one of those type of people. So she had no idea that her dad had been sick for a, such a long time. She knew he was sick. But she had no idea it was that serious. And for her to find out it was cancer, um, the last time he had took a trip to their house, she basically, you know, her and, th her and him had, you know, hashed things out because he wasn't really there in her, you know, younger life. He wasn't really um, an impact on her growing up. He didn't really spend that much time with her. Um, not, not, not that much quality time with her when she was growing up. He just wasn't, you know, there. Her mom did most of the rearing, you know. So it's good to see him back there. And he's really trying to spend a lot of time with her and his grandchildren, um, and his, uh, son-in-law and everything, because again, he's battling cancer and, you know, hopefully, hopefully, Everything gets cured and he won't have to, you know, go through that anymore. But in the meantime, it's best to spend, you know, as much time with your loved ones as you can, especially when you get diagnosed with a serious, serious disease. <laughs> but anyway, um, y'all know what uh, about Simone and Cecil? Like, let me tell me how y'all feel about this uh, for a long time. Cecil has had that best friend, you know, the woman that he's best friends with. And I cannot for the life of me remember her name. So if y'all can remember her name, please feel free to put it in the chat <laughs> because I cannot remember her name. But anywho, um, they were best friends for a very long time. And it was a it played a big part in why him and Simone, you know, had uh started all that arguing and fighting and how their relationship has spiraled downhill and they eventually broke up. Uh, well, I should say separated. He ended up, you know, moving, getting a different house. Um, well, actually they had already had a different house because of the fact that she was, uh, working and no, her job was really, really far from the main house. So they had got a separate house, but, but they still had separated and, he never came back home. And so the main issue come to find out was this woman. I mean, I thought it was a whole bunch of different things. You know, when people get married, you know, you never know. Marriage might last a year. Marriage might last 50 years. But, you know, they have their ups and downs, but you really have to fight. You know, you really have to fight if you want your marriage to survive. But it seems like the main, main reason for their separation was his best friend. And like when they were, um, the last episode, when they were at that restaurant and Simone just went, I mean, she went from zero to 100 out of nowhere. They were just having a wonderful evening, about to have a wonderful dinner. And then she just started going off, you know, about his girlfriend and how, not his girlfriend, I'm sorry, not his girlfriend, about his best friend and how he had went on a date. Well, it was it was more like a birthday date. It was, it was a birthday date. It wasn't like a date date. So he says it was a birthday date. <laughs> but she had asked him specifically, do not go out on that date with your best friend. He was like, you know what? I'm going. So she was like, you go out that door. Women do this all the time. If you go out that door, you bet not come back. And that's exactly what happened. Two days later, she filed for divorce. Now, my question is, my question is, something is missing here. Um, 
Because for a while, for as long as I can remember, Cecil has always implied that the relationship that he has with his bestie is strictly platonic. But again, I'm wondering, like, where did it all go wrong? Like, when or what happened um, to make Simone start feeling uncomfortable or uneasy or insecure with their friendship? I don't know. I don't know, but I think they're leaving something out. Like if there were, if there really was maybe a little something, something more to that friendship with his bestie, his best female friend. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And y'all let me know. I mean, would y'all be cool with y'all spouse, y'all mate, y'all boyfriend, girlfriend, whatnot, having a best friend that's of the opposite sex? Like I didn't have this discussion with people before. And I don't know how many women was like, heck no, nah. he can't have no best friend as a girl. And if he do, it better be somebody he already knew. And if he do, every time they hook up, we going to hook up. And if he do, you know, he ain't going to, you know, basically it's going to be us. It's a we thing. It ain't going to be my mate going, hanging out, you know, with a bestie that's the opposite sex. And I get it because sometimes, sometimes... People get weak. Like SWV, I get so weak. <laughs> but um, generally, a lot of people really is not cool with that. And I, I can't, I, you can't necessarily say it's just because, you know, they're insecure. I mean, things happen. Heck, things happen when guys or women don't have a best friend of the opposite sex. So, <laughs> but anyway, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But one thing I really did enjoy seeing on this uh, episode was when Eugene and Toya visited their new house, which is still under construction, um, and it's coming along pretty well. Now, when they were like, okay, my family, with me and my sons, and when I was living with my mom, you know, when I was younger and growing up, when I was staying with my mom, and every time we moved, we always, because my mom's really, really, really religious, like religious times 20. So she's really religious. Like when we was younger, coming home from school, the first thing we did before we even could do chores or play outside was come home, read like a chapter out the Bible, pray together, then we do our chores, then we can hit the streets. If we didn't have homework, of course. But I always did my homework in school. So that was just one less thing that had to interfere with me hitting them streets <laughs> when I got home. But yeah, my mom was really religious. So every house that we moved to, um, she would always take, you know, that Pentecostal, good old Pentecostal anointed prayer oil in that little bottle. <laughs> and she would take it and she would put crosses on all the doors in the house and on the... um the door frames of the house and the front door, the back door, you know, put crosses on the walls in every room. She would pray in every room, you know, bless this house, keep all the, you know, bad vibes away, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people do that stuff. Um, So it ain't just us and it ain't just Eugene and Toya on the show. But what I found really um cool was how they not only did that, they not only prayed, they not only anointed like walls and all that kind of stuff, but they actually wrote scriptures on the walls because the house is still being built. So there's no walls up. It's just a lot of wood and a lot of plywood and a lot of, you know, um, hardwood and everything, you know, on the floors and all that kind of stuff. So they were writing on that. So basically, um, once the house is complete, once the tile is down, the carpet is down, the walls is up. Um, underneath everything throughout that house is going to be Bible verses, Bible scriptures. And I thought that was, I was like, man, that is, I, that's really cool. If I ever had a house built from the ground, you know, I'm coming from a religious background, that might be something I would do. But, you know, you can never have too much prayer and too much faith in a family, like for real. But anyway, I thought it was really funny too, how, um, <laughs> Eugene, <laughs> he was like, okay, Toya. Now, you done got all your verses. The kids done put all their verses down. This is my verse. And I'm going to put it right here where the big screen is going to go, you know, across this wall. And I think that's like maybe where a fireplace um, is going to be or something because it was like a nice 
area for the TV. And he said, Ephesians 5.22. Wives, thou shalt submit the TV remote to thou husband. <laughs> I was like, all right, Eugene. She was like, nope, nope, nope. You can take that scripture and you can put it by the toilet. <laughs> Flush it on down. <laughs> but Toya, you know, Toya seems already, you know, this, mm, not overly submissive, but like heavenly. Okay, heavenly is submissive. Like she, she strikes me as somebody when her husband get home, she's right at the door with a glass of wine or uh, whatever he likes to drink. Um, the the food is already cooked. She is taking his coat off, taking his shoes off, taking his socks off, sitting him down. You know she call him daddy all the time, daddy. Daddy, <laughs> she call him daddy all the time. So I'm sure she's like, daddy, put your feet up, daddy. Let me rub your feet, daddy. Okay, that's heavenly. That's heavenly. I don't think Toy is that far, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was really funny. And then um, Toya, like right after that, she started getting like really emotional and tearing up. And I was like, God is good. Good, because they done been through the ringer. I mean, her husband makes good money. You know, he's a doctor. He's a physician. Um, But a few years back, y'all remember, they had lost their home that they were purchasing. And it was mainly because, for one, it was like a bad investment had went bad. Um, They had lost like 50000 Then also, you know, the taxes. They thought their taxes where I don't know what the issue was with the taxes. I'm still a little confused about that. But um, anyway, they had got behind. Like, they owed the government. They owed Uncle Sam the grip of money. Like, the grip of money. And so they had to, you know, give, give back their house that they was purchasing. Big, beautiful house. They downsized and moved in a rental. Um, and then have been just working on, you know, paying, cleaning up their finances, you know, bringing their, uh, school credit scores back up, you know, all that jazz paying off the I to the R to the S and they did that. They did all of that. So now they're able to finally buy a new home again. And that has to be like, I would be over the roof because the house that they are buying, it seems like it's going to be way better than the last house, except for this time, it's going to be cheaper because they're living in a different neighborhood. I think they're a little bit farther from the city. They're on the, you know, the outskirts of the city. So, you know, the house is going to be a little cheaper. It's in their budget. Toya says she's square. She would never live outside her budget again or at the top of their budget again. So they way under budget. So, you know what? They learn a lesson. They learn a lesson and about to move in that big, beautiful house. And I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> cannot wait to see it. But um, Aiden, uh, again, Aiden, you know, he's doing much better now. And since he's back home and feeling better, uh, him and Mariah decided to go ahead with, you know, their planning of the docks on the dock party, which they haven't had in about, I think she said like four or five years you know, like four or five years. Now, that docks on the dock party. I don't know if y'all remember that. They did show bits and pieces of it, you know, like um, past videos of it. And they, it didn't really go all that well. <laughs> a lot of people had got into arguments, disagreements. Um, I remember Quad was in the middle of something. And that was when Quad and her man had just just Gregory had just got married so it was it was a lot going on but you know they decided to do it again because everybody's been asking them no when's the next docs on the dock party and everything so they figured they go ahead and continue on with those plans since Aiden is doing better but um y'all tell me please tell me Aiden didn't have on a do-rag now I kept rewinding I kept rewinding <laughs> I can't rewind it. I was like, what is that on his head? Is that a scarf? Is that a head wrap? Is that a do-rag? Is do Aiden got on a do-rag? Y'all tell me, was that a do-rag? Because is he trying to make some waves? Is he, <laughs> is he trying to grow waves? Like Aiden is not black. Um, uh, he don't have black hair. He 
I don't know. That looked like a do rag. And do y'all remember like when? Okay, remember the celebrity dress up party um, that they had, and he had dressed up as Lucius, and Mariah had dressed up as Cookie. She was Cookie, and Lucius. Um, he had on some kind of. It looked like he had on a do rag then, or a, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But that was a costume. That was a costume, and Lucius does routinely wear do rags in that TV show. But they ain't playing dress up right now. So I'm like, is that a do rag that he's wearing? I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could maybe it was a man scarf. I don't. <laughs> do they make man scarves? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm like, Aiden might be trying to grow some ways. Mm, put some. Just, some jam, put some gel on there. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, y'all know when Dr. Jackie and Dr. Curtis was out house hunting, uh, she took him to see a piece of land, you know, that she believed would be a great spot for them to build a new home. Now, they weren't able to agree on any of the properties that they've already seen thus far. So she figured, like some people, if you can't find nothing that's already thrown up together, then just build it from the ground up. So she took him to see a piece of property. And one thing she had mentioned, she was like, while she was explaining to him, we could do whatever we want and put this here and, you know, all that. And so she was like, and also I can make me a two story closet just like Toya is getting built in her newly built home. And I was like, uh, hmm. She said she got the idea from Toya. But I wonder if Toya knows that she's going to do that. Because y'all all know how Toya can get. And yeah, it might be something petty. Uh, some people might, oh, that's petty. And she would get upset because she's doing that. But come on, y'all know how Toya is. And the first thing I can see her doing is, oh, you just had to be like me. You just had to copy off of me. You just had, I can see her doing that. I really, instead of, oh, girl, yeah, that's a good idea. Yep, I did that too. Yep, you're going to love it. You know? mm -mm. <laughs> nope, see, that would be me. That would be me. Girl, for real? Yeah, well, mm -hmm, yeah two-story closet. That's what's up, girl. Give me some high five, you know to this two-story closet. But anyway, <laughs> I don't see Toya doing all that. I see her kind of hating or kind of be like, why she got to do, why she got, <sighs> anyway, anyway. But um, it also looks like Contessa and Heavenly are off to being besties. Like, man, when they show the flashbacks of when those two had gotten off on the wrong foot last season, um, when they were sitting on that bed, and remember Heavenly was just going off, I don't even remember what she was going off about, but I remember that scene, and Heavenly was just going off and going on and on, and Contessa was like, just shut up, just shut up, I mean, she was like, just shut the hell up, Heavenly, I mean, because Heavenly, when she gets to going, that mouth be going 300 miles an hour. <laughs> she be going 300 miles an hour and she be talking over people. Don't let you get a word in. Cussing at you. Talking about your mama this, your mama that. You know, a whole grown woman still talking about your mama this and your mama that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she had told her, you know, shut your big old mouth up. But now they looking like they on their way to becoming besties. And, you know, that's might be a good thing because... Toya and Contessa used to be, like, really, really close. They done fell out. They cordial now, but not like what they used to be. So, anyway, that's cool. Contessa done got her a new friend. <laughs> Let's see how this works out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Contessa and Heavenly, they decided, you know what, we're going to go support Quad um, on her Sister Circle show. And one thing I noticed is that Quad, I mean, you can definitely tell that Quad absolutely loves what she is doing on that Sister Circle show. I think she's truly like found her niche. And I mean, okay, before, what was she doing? I mean, the clothing dog, the clothing line for dogs. 
that's what she was doing. I don't know if she's still doing that because I really haven't seen her mess with any dogs this season, really. Or even mess with any doggy clothes this season. I think I seen one episode where she was playing around with some doggy clothes. But, you know, I think she found her niche with this, you know, sister circle. But y'all tell me the truth here. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. <laughs> tell the truth and shame the devil. Um, Did y'all catch that when Mariah was talking to that musician at the party? Um, Okay. The last time they met was at Dr. Jerry's party. And she was like, oh, my goodness. He can say the trolls off of somebody. And he really has a nice, he really has a nice voice. And he's not too bad on the eyes either. But she was like dragging it out. Like, oh, my God. He can just say the, like, oh, she about to drop it. Like, he drop it like it's hot. <laughs> but then at her party, when he was like, um, what would you like to hear tonight? She gave him this look and she was popping these. I think she was, what did she have? Like strawberries or grapes? She was popping something in her mouth and she was just looking at him like, um, anything, whatever you play, I'm listening. Yeah, see, y'all didn't catch that. Am I the only one who caught that? Like, it looked like she was that old lusting demon was coming out at her own party. Where her husband at? I'm like, <laughs> where is Aiden? <laughs> Probably walking around somewhere with that do rag on too tight. But <laughs> anyway, I was like, no. Okay, it could have been innocent, but uh, I'm I'm sure it was innocent. I ain't trying to say she out there cheating on Aiden, not cheating on Aiden. Even though she did say to the ladies one time that he wasn't all that down there. He make up for it in other areas. Hmm. Anyway, moving right along, moving right along. I don't want to be talking about little Aiden. Um, but you know, the party, <laughs> the party, unlike the last one, went off without a hitch. I mean, and the rain held up. It looked like it was gonna rain at first, and you know, Mariah was worried, oh my god, it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain, but they had tents anyway. So, um, the backyard view was lovely, you know, with the lake and everything, and um, it was beautiful. Everybody was dressed up nice. Um, it looked like everybody there was, you know, with somebody as well, except for Quad. But she seemed to be enjoying herself anyway. And it might sound funny. <laughs> it might sound funny. But I was pretty proud of the ladies. Because for once... They didn't all show their natural brown behinds. I mean, Heavenly was cordial to Mariah, as she should have been, especially since she's on Mariah's turf. <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, that little sit down that they had at the church when uh, Heavenly invited her to the church so they could, you know, discuss their issues and put everything on the table. You know, remember she cussed her out too accidentally in the church. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. So I think we all good on that. No lightning came down or anything. <laughs> but Mariah Shaw was moving over. She was like, uh, Heavenly, you just cussed in church. She's like, oh, did I? Oh, did I? <laughs> that's how she sounds. Oh, that's how Heavenly sounds. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> she lost her Christianity for a hot minute and started cussing in church. But, um, her and Mariah, you know, they seem like they getting along pretty well. And Heavenly knew, though, still not to approach her mother. Do not try to butter up her mother. Not tonight. It's much too soon. Um, The last time Mariah, I mean, Heavenly tried to approach Mariah's mother and apologize for, I mean, like... Okay, Mariah, every time Heavenly got a chance when her and Mariah was arguing, it was always, yo mama, yo mama ugly, yo mama this, yo mama. So you know what? Mariah's mom, she's like, really? I can't forgive you yet. That's what she told her the last time. I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't forgive you yet. I, I can't tell if you're sincere. And it's a good thing she didn't forgive her because even though even this episode, Heavenly did it again. I mean, this season, Heavenly did it again with the Yo Mamas. So, you know, but that was before she took her little spiritual journey or I don't know. 
I think Heavily is doing overall. I think Heavily is doing a lot better, and um, her mom still can't stand her. But you know what? Hopefully, hopefully down the road by next season, she'll be able to be on speaking terms with uh, Mariah's mom. <laughs> but overall, again, all the ladies there are now on good terms. They made promises to do better and communicate better with each other in the future. And one thing I love about the fellas, like the fellas. The ladies need to take notes from the fellas. They Every time they get together, they can sit around. Even if they wise is at each other's throats, they can still sit around and be cordial and cool and smoke cigars and sip on their bourbon and, you know, or whatever dark liquor they drinking. And just, just last episode, y'all, this is how it's supposed to be. We're just supposed to be together. We're supposed to chill, relax kick it, shoot the breeze, unlike the ladies, this is how it should be. They need to take notes. <laughs> they need to take notes. But hopefully next season, when um, next season starts, I'm hoping that every issue between them is all squashed out. And I'm actually looking forward to the reunion. Lord, that reunion looked like it's going to be lit. So y'all make sure y'all tune in for the reunion next week. And I will be coming at y'all with a review of the reunion next week. So um, let me know what y'all thought about this episode, the finale, um, or anything throughout this season. Let me know what you think about, you know, any of the, if you got something to say, comment on any of the characters or anything, please let me know. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comment. You can still comment after the video is over and I'll get the notifications and I will be able to chop it up with you in the comment section. But anyway, in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.